welcome back to my channel. It's a girl Lissy, and today guys We're gonna be talking about some more creepy nostalgic stuff because that's what I do best here on this channel And I hope you guys are ready for it right angel She says smash a like on today's video Let's see if we can get today's video to 10,000 likes guys And if we do I'll continue this series about creepy children show characters that keep me up at night Also if you guys are new here be sure to subscribe I have a lot of really exciting videos that I can't tell you guys about yet So make sure you guys are subscribed but yeah guys today we're literally gonna be talking about some of the most cursed creepiest kids show characters on the entire face of this planet and earth because I love talking about weird stuff. We love creepy nostalgia. Tea is hot and let's get into it. So the first scary show we're going to be talking about and character we're going to be talking about is from a show called Wizbit and the character's name itself was Wizbit. Wizbit is a 1980s BBC children's TV show about an alien magician named Wizbit. It starred the established TV stage and stage magician Paul Daniels and his assistant Debbie McGee. The series is set in Puzzletopias, a town inhabited by walking, talking, spongebob, dice, magic wands, playing cards, and even rabbits. And in this world, the protagonist must solve puzzles along the way. Wizbit's year and a day mission is to find out all about planet Earth. The show is actually partially educational. Yes, somehow this cursed show is partially educational, even though it looks like this. Oh, oh, oh. And it would literally terrify me to even sit in front of the TV show and make myself watch this to learn anything. When I'm staring at Wizbit here on the screen, it makes me literally question the existence of my own life. So Wizbit is a large yellow cone-shaped wizard's hat, voiced by Paul Daniels and played by Tony Friel. Yeah, that's the person inside of Wizbit. Wooly is another character from the show. He is an eight-foot-tall white rabbit, and he's the best friend of Wizbit. Wouldn't you guess that? And he's also voiced by Paul Daniels. Squidry Bog is a purple swamp monster voiced by Martin Daniels, and Professor Doom is a mustached evil genius arch-villain who lives in a castle which sits atop a giant stone fist in the sky. I don't know who directed this show, who thought this was a good concept, or what they were, you know, smoking when they made this, but the show is just all very, very creepy and very strange. Don't even know how somebody thought about these ideas in the very first place to start off with it all. It's all that weird, but if you guys couldn't get the gist here, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like anything to do with Wizbit. I don't want to watch Wizbit. Comment down below, have you guys ever seen this show and what do you guys think of Wizbit? Would you guys have watched it as a kid? Me? No thank you. I'm glad I didn't watch this one. So the next show we're going to be talking about is um, also an educational one, but not just any kind of educational one. A religiously based educational show. And I do want to put a disclaimer, I'm fine with having beliefs. I do not judge anyone's beliefs because I myself am personally religious, but just the way that they chose characters for the show and directed the show is all around very unsettling, especially the main character. So the main character of the show is Pasalti, and he is a book, specifically a Bible. The show is called Pasalti Songs for Little Praisers. Hey kids, it's time for Salty Songs for Little Praisers. This was a musical show that was meant to teach kids the Bible, featuring a giant blue talking singing man dressed as a Bible book. His name was Salty. They literally put a man in this costume and just painted his face blue and called him the Bible, which is already a lot to take in. During the show, he ran around creepily amongst the screen, interacted with young children the entire time. Like I said, by no means am I trying to make fun of anybody's religion here, because like I said, I am religious and I also have religious beliefs. But if I was a little kid and they put this on TV and they told me, that this is how I'm going to learn something, I would be more terrified by just looking at this man's face than the whole concept that I'm trying to get the gist of. I'd be scared and traumatized by just this show, let alone any of the beliefs on the side. Just the way that they filmed this was not right. <laughs> Even creepier was that all the adults casted onto the show that were dressed as animals, such as sheep, mice, or other creatures, had face paint slapped onto them really creepily and they had to play ridiculous voice roles, like they made their voices sound ridiculous. Can't have much of a praise party without a cast. <laughs> Instead of just making like a full mascot costume, they're like, nah, let's leave the full face and just slap some paint on there and make them be a part of the show. Did not help with anything. There was also really creepy talking creatures, books and boxes during the show that were like animatronic looking. I don't know why, if it's supposed to be a religious show. Everything about this show in general just gave off very unsettling, disturbing, traumatizing vibe. So the next show has another really scary creature. Um, this one is called Terra Hawks and this thing on the screen that I'm putting right here, yes, that is part of the Terra Hawks show. Show is 
really traumatizing, like all the rest of them. This is a sci-fi children's show created by Gary Anderson. The series was set in 2020 after an alien force has destroyed NASA's Mars base, and Earth apparently is under threat. So we've already passed 2020, and we're in the future of the show now, which... That literally tells us how old this show is. A small organization, the Terra Hawks, is set up to defend the planet. From Hawk Nest, their secret base in South America, they develop a sophisticated weapon to prepare the battles to come. But the problem with this show was literally just this one character on the screen that was literally traumatizing all the kids. Yes, this was one of the main characters of the show. This character had gray hair, brown eyes, a wrinkly tree-like texture to her skin, almost looked witch-like with long claws, and I can tell you, under all the reddit forums I've seen, any kid who had this show played to them when they were younger says that they were just completely traumatized after watching the show. They had a hard time sleeping at night and would often have nightmares just thinking about the character. So I can totally see why. So the next show is Nightmare Feel and I want to apologize. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm going to try to say it. It's Slanko Retifak Palacha. I don't know how to say that. Like I said, it's in another language. So forgive me if I said it wrong. Retifak Placha is a character from an educational children's TV show. He served as one of the hosts of the show, and this show, and especially this character, is famous worldwide for creating a lot of nightmare feel for the kids who watched it. Ratafak is a puppet that appears with a human peach skin. He has messy thin white hair, blue eyes, red lips, light yellow buck teeth, large round cheeks, a very long giraffe-like neck, and a huge nose. He is wide and stands about seven feet tall and he has four legs. <laughs> what the heck? He wears a large blanket that is red, white, and light blue with patches on it and he also wears red gloves in the series, whereas outside of the show he wears white gloves. The way the puppetry works is two people actually hide underneath a blanket with a sleeve for them with one of the puppeteers having their arm out of the neckline of the blanket in a peach colored sleeve holding and controlling Ratifax's head. That's really creepy to imagine or even think about people inside of there controlling this huge cursed looking puppet. Ratifax is actually a silly character. His, he's supposed to be silly and goofy according to the show. He's actually slightly a confused person and he's really enthusiastic. For say he would say things that would mislead the children who watch the show, allowing the children to correct him so he'd be like, I don't know, what color is that? Or you know, kind of like some Dora the Explorer type stuff. And this was a Slovakian TV show, I'm pretty sure. If you grew up in Slovakia or had seen this, let me know as a kid if this character terrified you because according to the internet, it caused nightmare feel for a lot, a lot of people. Like a lot of people, specifically this was the character that they hated more than any other kids show character. And that's speaking words, it's made it into the top like most terrifying kids show characters ever, possibly ranks number one. So the next show is one that I've never heard of until I did research for today's video for you guys. And this one is called Telechat. So Telechat had puppets and these puppets were not your typical puppets. They were very human-like looking animals. And this is where I have a problem with the show. These puppets were supposed to be animals, but they just felt so human-like. The way that they dressed, the way they talked and held their posture and pretty much presented themselves felt like half animal, half human. And that's where it became really unsettling. So Telechat is a French-Belgian puppet show created by Belgian director Henry. It ran for three seasons between 1983 and 1985 with a total of 234, yes, 234 episodes of these cursed little creatures. And they were each five minutes. So at least they weren't long episodes. They were only five minute episodes, thank goodness. They were a parody of new shows and they were hosted by two funny animals. A tomcat named Groucha and an ostrich named Lola. It featured a variety of sentient objects and revolved around the idea that real life elementary particles known as gluons were the souls of objects. Very strange concept for a TV show. With its surreal and sometimes dark humor, the series enjoys cult status in France and Belgium. According to the producer of the show, a number of episodes were even dubbed in the UK on Disney Channel? What? I don't even know how that's possible. Although apparently many episodes were rejected by Disney on the grounds that Lola showed too much cleavage. Ooh, isn't that the ostrich? An ostrich with boobs? Excuse me? <laughs> They're a little too human-like. So take it as you guys would like to, but for me personally, the idea of these very human-like animals just came off very wrong, okay? I didn't like it. I didn't like any of it. I didn't like the fact that they were dressing and presenting themselves the way they did with just the whole look. I don't know. They could have made really cute puppets, but no, they made those things. And that leads us to our last scary kid show that I used to watch and actually enjoy that some people apparently didn't. 
And that's Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yes, it did scare me a little bit as a kid, but I still enjoyed it in a really unsettling way. Courage the Cowardly Dog is an American animated comedy horror television series created by John Dilworth for Cartoon Network and distributed by Warner Bros. The title character is a dog who lives with an elderly couple in a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. In each episode, the trio is thrown into a bizarre, frequently disturbing, and often paranormal or supernatural adventure. The series is known for its dark, surreal humor and its atmosphere. So you guys might be like, what's so bad about that? Well, rumor has it, according to the internet, this show was actually based off a real elderly couple and their dog who lived in the middle of nowhere and had some sort of devil-linked house, and that's where it gets creepy. People say it's based on a real scenario, and during the episodes, if you look closely, they throw in subtle hints to the devil, and it gets kind of dark. This is a kid's show, mind you not, this is where it kind of has problems, and it actually freaks me out looking back at it, that I was sitting there watching that, and my family had no clue that I was watching a show animated, potentially linking to darker things. So they subtly threw in like numbers and animations of the devil, and they were showing this to little kids, yes. Eight-year-old me was sitting there munching on macaroni and chocolate chip cookies watching a show about cursed paranormal with two elderly people who own a dog, and I guess I enjoyed it. <laughs> Booba. So if you guys haven't heard about the boobas, they're really ugly. They're horrifying. I remember my little sister used to watch this and I was like, turn that off when she was really young because these things freaked me out. They were worse than the Teletubbies in my opinion, but very similar. They're like the Teletubbies long lost cursed twin from a different dimension. So Booba was a show on a British TV program that was produced by Ragdoll Productions. The boobas are five gumdrop shaped creatures with large eyes and the lights in their head for eyebrows. Their heads are shriveled up into their necks like some weird sort of caterpillar creature, and they creepily move around and fly with each other in the sky. And boobas do not speak, okay? They only speak in their own little booba language. Instead, they communicate by making noises like squeaks and cracks as their way of communicating in their own language. Even adults that had children that watched the boobas found the boobas to be terrifying. I mean, how could you not? Like, if I had a kid watching this, I'd be slightly concerned for my child. Just in the fact that I'd be like, why? There's so many cute things on TV, but why? Why the boobas? <laughs> The name is already not good in the first place. Booba? <laughs> like, what were they thinking? It's a kid's show. Booba. Booba. There's just something super unsettling about the way that the boobas walk around and move and dance around on the screen. And the boobas even have a website that's straight up cursed. If you go to this website, it has distorted music and creepy flash games that honestly, in my opinion, would not entertain anybody who's above the age of three because the website itself is just like, what is happening? What the f is going on <laughs> okay oh my god honestly they just remind me of a more cursed version of a child tubby in my opinion with a more weirder plot twist to it boobas were also described as magical atoms of energy and they were played by actors in full-blown costume body suits what that is the most concerning thing ever so essentially actors were under this big mascot costume of a booba i'm trying to imagine in my own vision a full-grown man wearing a booba suit <laughs> or a full-grown woman either or there's somebody under those suits and i just i want to know how that was for them <laughs> Scariest. Eventually in 2004, filming for Booba's ended and the show was completely cancelled. And that was the end of the Booba era. Was it a good ending? I don't know. What do you guys think about Booba's? Did you guys ever watch that show? I didn't personally want to watch it, but um, yeah, I watched the Teletubbies and that was cursed enough on its own. So the next character we're going to be talking about is called Fofa. I hope I'm saying that right. Fofa was from the island of Dr. Maro and was an alien born creature from a fictional planet called Fofa Land. It was named after himself. Fafo Landia. Fafo? Fofa? I don't know. Maybe it's Fafo. He came to Earth to form his own band called Balloon Magic with a large group of children that performed alongside him. He actually grew to become quite popular amongst Brazilian children getting to have their own program, dolls, and other licensed products. However, this is still incredibly freaky to me, and the features on this character are just so abnormal and bizarre. I don't understand how this character was appealing to children and not terrifying them to like run away from
from their televisions. He had notably strange cheeks that would outgrow and sag amongst his chin and just droop down, like a very long droopy cheek. And his eyes gave off almost a sinister, scary, rude looking stare that would just stare into your soul. He had a nightmarish appearance and it was completely unintentional by the producers and writers of the show. Accordingly, they did not intend to make this character look horrifying. They wanted him to appeal to kids, which is really fascinating to me because personally, I don't know where they didn't see this to be a nightmare feel character. What do you guys think? This would give me nightmares personally. Okay, so the next kid show character that we're gonna spill some tea on is one that I've talked about in the past and that is Barney the Big Old Purple Dinosaur. I'm sure we've all watched Barney or at least have heard about Barney the Dinosaur, but Barney the Dinosaur has such a long history to him. So Barney the Dinosaur was a beloved children's character that has been a part of the popular culture since the 1990s. Barney was created by Cheryl in 1987 and the character made his debut on television series Barney and Friends in 1992. The show was designed to educate and entertain young children with Barney and his friends singing songs, dancing, and teaching lessons about teamwork and friendship along the show. And I believe that Cheryl designed Barney for her son, who really loved purple dinosaurs. I don't know, I heard that online somewhere. Although Barney was initially very popular with young children and their parents, the character in the show eventually faced criticism and a lot of controversy along the way. Some people felt the show was too simplistic and that it promoted a one-dimensional, overly optimistic view of the world, while others on the other half felt that the character's catchphrases such as, I love you, you love me, were overly promoted and the show's repetitive format was not good for their children to hear those words for some reason. I personally don't see anything wrong with the whole I love you, you love me, we're a happy family, but maybe as a kid, the kids could take it in the wrong way. I don't know. I more so had a problem with Barney the dinosaur being a gigantic purple dinosaur that runs around on TV. The suit itself was scary to me. The way that he just stood and looked and his facial features just came off really eerie in my opinion. What do you guys think about Barney? Despite the criticism, Barney remained a popular and enduring cultural icon and the character continues to be loved by many children and adults around the world to this day. So the next character we're going to be talking about is Mr. Blobby. And I've actually covered Mr. Blobby in an entire video before but he is so freaking creepy and cursed that I just wanted to bring him into today's video as well because some of you guys still don't know about Mr. Blobby. So Mr. Blobby is a character that was created and popularized by the British entertainment show Noelle's House Party which aired on BBC from 1991 to 1999. Mr. Blobby was a large fluffy creature with pink and white striped body and a round, smiling face. He was known for his wacky antics and his tendency to cause chaos wherever he went. He had big old googly eyes and he only talked in his own blobby language. So he would say things like blobby 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 and it almost sounded robotic and he even sang his own blobby songs which were terrifying. He even released a Christmas single called Mr. Blobby in 1993, which became a chart-topping hit in the United Kingdom. And he even had a theme park designed after his show because people loved him so much. What? Why? I don't understand. He's so creepy. Despite his initial popularity, Mr. Blobby eventually faced criticism and backlash during his career. Some people felt that the character was childish and overly simplistic, and others found him annoying or even frightening. Despite this, Mr. Blobby remained a popular and memorable culture icon and continues to be remembered by many people as a symbol of the 1990s British and pop culture era. What do you guys think about Mr. Blobby? Would you have watched that show growing up as a kid or would you have been horrified? I for one don't know. Maybe I would have found it kind of funny but also terrifying. So the next children's show that we're going to be covering today that might have given you nightmares as a kid was The Wiggles. I actually watched The Wiggles as a kid. Don't ask why. I don't know. My family put it on for me. But not The Wiggles in specific that we're going to be covering that actually is kind of scary but the puppets that they put on the show as show filler were the problem here. So The Wiggles are an Australian children's entertainment group that was formed in Sydney in 1991. The group originally consisted of Anthony, Murray, Greg, and Jeff and they became known for their energetic performances and very catchy, catchy music that aimed at children. In fact, so catchy that I still remember some of the songs that they played on the show, such as Fruit Salad, Yummy Yummy. It was so catchy. The Wiggles often use puppets 
as a part of their performance in educational videos. The puppets were designed and built by the group's founding member, Anthony, and they included characters such as Dorothy the Dinosaur, Wags the Dog, and Henry the Octopus. They were actually based on Alvin and the Chickmunks because that was super popular back then, so they got some inspiration from that to make these puppets. And they thought it was a good idea to add this element to the show and really spice up their show with these puppets. But it really wasn't. These puppets were horrifying. They had their own unique personalities and styles, and their voices were pitched up to sound like a very high-pitched rodent resembling the Alvin and the Chickmunks sort of feel. <laughs> They moved in an odd and bizarre manner, and they had very strange puppetry to go along with their very odd movements. They always had these big, creepy, firm plastered smiles amongst their face like they were grinning so hard that their cheeks hurted, and their eyes were absolutely huge. And they appeared on a screen to be large and beady. Yeah. It felt like we were watching more of a horror film than we were actually watching a children's show when you saw these puppets emerge on the Wiggles. So of course the Wiggles gained a lot of popularity for a very long time and they even were still popular till today. I think I recently saw on TikTok that there was a Wiggles comeback concert where adults that were my age, because this was the age group of like the Wiggles viewers, went back to watch the Wiggles perform as full grown adults, which is kind of crazy and nostalgic. But I don't know if they brought the puppets on stage, I really hope they didn't. Anyways guys, that was it for today's scary kid show icons that gave me nightmares. Let me know in the comments down below what kid show characters scared you guys the most when you guys were little. I'm curious and I want to hear more about it. And I would love to make a part two if you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments which characters I should cover in a part two. It's been Lissy. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed, smash a like and subscribe to join the family. I post new videos every single week and I also have other socials linked down below. And I'll see all of you lovely people in the next video. Bye guys! Thank you.